can I just sneak out this back door here? You're, you're done. That was it. <laughs> Millie Edwards, wow. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Well, welcome. I've got a confession to make. You know, I worked for three years at another Unity Church, and I served there for three years as the director of worship. And when I started my internship here, it was my first Sunday, I sat down in a chair, I think I was right around where you are now, and I listened to all this music, and I listened to all this stuff, and I thought, what is going on? This is crazy. I can't figure this out. See, I had come with this very narrow vision of what worship should look like and sound like. And so I sat with it for a couple more weeks, and I listened to Reverend Duke, and I listened to Heidi, and then I got it. I came to understand that this is who you are. This is who you are. Because, because here at Unity Temple on the Plaza, we're a community where diversity is praised. And peace and harmony are the rewards. A place where diversity is praised. And so you have this fabulous, fabulous, diverse music program. We have Charlene, who plays beautifully on this just magnificent pipe organ that brings us back, some of us, to our Christian roots. Then we have a cappella music with no music accompaniment at all that just introduces us to our worship service and later on it'll treat us to lead us out of our meditation time. We have choir. Most of the year the choir is dressed in traditional robes. Then we have this contemporary, amazing, soulful jazz singer, Millie Edwards, wow. Later on, you're going to be treated to a small ensemble led by our, our music director, Steve Perry. And we have a guest today. We have a guest accompany us, Jan Kowick. Let's give it for Jan. Good to have you here. See, we are a place where diversity is praised. I see you. I see you. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Because you see, when we were able to see ourselves and one another, truly see ourselves, we are able to step into that place of truth, the power of what may be. So we're going to do that three ways today. First, we're going to look at some tools some tools for seeing what may be for each of us as individuals. And then we're going to look at a Bible character, because I always like to bring a little Bible into it. And then thirdly, we're going to look at how we can see the power of what may be for us as a community. So we're going to start with a question. What is it that holds us back from experiencing all that we are, the power of what may be. What holds us back? And may I suggest, it just might be because we act stupid. <laughs> I said it, we act stupid. Now notice I said we act stupid. I'm not saying we are stupid. There's a big, big difference. We are not stupid, but sometimes we act stupid. The difference is, when we act stupid, I feel it is a natural part of our process. It's our evolution. It's our process of growth and development. We act stupid. The opportunity is to notice it, notice it, and then choose again, choose new. That's where growth happens. That's where we claim our power of what may be, what may be more. Always an opportunity. And of course, everybody knows the definition. I had to go check. But everybody knows the definition of stupidity. It's when we 
act the same way over and over again, and we expect different results. Anyone else do that? <laughs> OK, it's not just me. Good, it's not just me. There's some others here, too. Eckhart Tolle, in his book, A New Earth, which is awakening to your life's purpose, speaks of this stupidity. But he doesn't use the word stupidity. He uses addictions. Addictions are those things that we do over and over and over again. They're habits. They're compulsions. And each of us has them. We all have them at different levels. And maybe they started out just fine, very innocently. Because you see, each of us has this ego, this ego that wants to protect our persona of who we think we are, who we think we should be, how we want to be preserved or perceived, rather than accepting and being with what really is, to claim that power of what is, what may really be. We all do this, all of us. And so what are some of those ways, those ways that, that we do this? There's lots. There's turning on the television set, playing on the internet, having a little drink, maybe an eating disorder, sexual promiscuity, all kinds of ways that we numb ourselves and imprison ourselves rather than experiencing all that can be, all the potential that we are. So how are we going to do this? I've got a personal example. See, there was a, a time in my life, a long time in my life, where I was a closet smoker. Uh, it started when I was 16 years old. I was acting and directing a play, Tennessee Williams play, called The Glass Menagerie. And I was playing the role of Tom. And Tom smoked. So being the true method actor that I was, <laughs> I was going to smoke. Not only was I going to smoke, I was going to inhale. Ooh. I was going to be cool. And I got those little candy cigarettes, you know, those mint cigarettes. And they were good. And before you know it, I was hooked. And I was smoking, and for the next 30 years, I was smoking with more or less success in quitting. So I roll forward 30 years now. I'm 46 years old, and I'm working at Unity Church of Overland Park. And I am definitely a closet smoker. And I remember sitting on that patio, my, my home on my patio, putting out yet another cigarette, thinking, please, I want to quit. Please, God, help me. You know, I, oh, I so remember just, please, God, help me. You know, I'm going to be a minister. If there's really a God up there, you'll help me. Oh, and then I got it. What am I doing? What are you doing, Greg? Please, God, help me? Is that how we teach prayer at Unity? Is that really what I believe? That some power out there is going to come and Rescue me from what? Rescue me from myself? No. I have the power in me. And I can claim that power or not. I can keep claiming, please, God, help me, which is doing what? It's painting myself as a victim in need. Well, guess what happens? I remained a victim in need. That's how it works. So I got to choose anew. I got to choose I see myself as whole and free. I no longer need tobacco, and I am a non-smoker. I see myself as whole and free. Will you say that with me? I see myself as whole and free. <clears throat> see if you can do that. I see myself as whole and free. One more time. I see myself as whole and free. There's a little character in the Bible, one of my, my favorite little guys. He's in the New Testament. He's not that little. 